Right. So for anybody that's under a rock, they don't know Fanbase is a social media platform that allows any regular creator to earn money based off of subscriptions. Yeah. In a nutshell. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'll say this. I mean, well, first, Fanbase is a social network. It's free to download, free to use. I say that all the time. So sometimes people get the, the, the notion that Fanbase might cost money. It doesn't cost any money to download and use the platform. I would say look at it as a freemium model mm -hmm. so that you can have, you can use it like you would use Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But then you can also have this added layer of um, subscribers if you want to. And, and, and that's the part that I think is most important. And I, I'm going to say this until the world acknowledges me for this, is that I invented peer-to-peer -peer in app purchase subscription on mobile devices. So that means what Fanbase allows you to do is take out your phone and use a fingerprint or a face scan through the App Store or the Google Store to subscribe to a person. Before, people would pull out credit cards. If you're using all these other apps that have subscribers, using a credit card. But once I did that and we launched that in 2019, about two years later, all the other platforms started doing it, including Apple changed their model, Google changed their model to accommodate the vision that people are going to be subscribing to people more than Netflix. Okay, so let's take it back a little bit. Yeah. You recently raised $17 million is the number that I'm hearing, right? We're raising, we've raised 10. You raised $10 million. I've already raised $10 million in three years. Um, and so that extreme, that was extremely important because um, it gave us the capital kind of really to start and be acknowledged as a platform that people can, can, uh, can really use and give us the ability to build what we wanted to build. Like we didn't have to, we didn't have to really think about, um, you know, like I was, I was funding this myself. Let's say that I spent like 200,000 on my own money. And at some point we were like, yo, we got to get this thing to the next level. And so, um, COVID had happened and we were in equity crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding came along and gave me the opportunity to do that. So, all right. So. You you raise ten million. You're trying to raise another seven million. I'm not trying. I'm raising seven. I want to raise seventeen million dollars. Okay. <laughs> um, have you ever? Why haven't you gone the venture capital route or angel or like just what 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 made the crowdfunding situation appealing as opposed to trying to target VCs, trying to target angel investors? Uh, maybe you did. I'm not sure. But I think there's two. I think there's two major things that um, affected that decision. First and foremost was racial bias, like the ability for, for black startups to get funded, right? That was one of the first things. And then secondly, we were in COVID. It was Talk about racial bias, though, because they might not fully understand. So in 2023, black startups received, I think, 0.69% of funding, right? And that was like so, so, so low. Um, it was down from like 1.5%. Um, the out of all capital. So out of all the capital that VCs invested, mm -hmm. they invest they invested almost a little over half of a percent into black founders in all areas. So when you think about that, that's like ninety ninety nine point five percent going to other people that are not black. So the the likelihood that you're gonna get funded from a from a VC is so like it's not happening really. You know, what I mean it's it's very, very rare that those things happen. I even had a conversation with a with a good friend of mine, chameleonaire about three or four days ago. And we were talking about the equity crowdfunding route and how the timing is right now because because venture capital is actually getting tighter with the purse strings. But something that frustrated him that he relayed to me is like, you're right about this, this, you know, about this capital. He's like, I've seen he goes, I went to like I can't remember what school he went to. And he's like, I saw a dude get up on stage and present and said he needed twenty million dollars for a startup, a white kid, and they gave him forty five. Like that. Imagine just going, going into a room saying, I need $45 million to build my company. And somebody just cutting you a check saying, here, go do it. Like, they're not doing that for us. Like, like we're not getting those looks. Yeah, that doesn't exist in our world. So, I mean, when people here raise, right, you raise the 10, you're going to raise the 7, either it's 17. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will look at, like, well, well, why do we need the 17? Right? They don't understand the, the capital, how capital intensive this could be. Mm -hmm. They know scaling. So, what is the determining factor when you say this is the number we need to get to, right? It, you could have said, let's raise 27. Is right. It, was it a realistic thing or was, from a scalability standpoint, this is where we want to be at this point in, in our company? So we, we came up with a three-year plan. So up until this point, we funded Fanbase um, and been able to, to build the company at a steady pace. But right now, we have to, we're in scale mode as opposed to startup mode. We're no longer a startup, in my opinion. We're trying to scale the company. So to do that, we actually have to build functionality 
and build faster to keep up with the demands of what users want, especially if we want to uh, capitalize on exactly what's going on with creators and monetization. So first and foremost, um, 17 million was a, was a number because we're, um, we're valued at $160 million now. So when I first launched the company, we were valued at 20 million. Then I did a raise of 50, then I did a raise of 85 million. And now this raise right now is valued at $160 million. And so roughly about 10% of the company is up for, um, investment to the general public, um, on startengine.com slash fan base, if you can see this. Um, so, uh, so for that reason, we wanted to be able to, what, what I say, accommodate what users want and scale. So there's a lot of things that go into building a startup. Like this stuff is expensive. I know and you guys know more than anything and tech is extremely expensive. And so, um, so to scale the company, first thing we want to do is focus on scaling our, our functionality, our productivity. So right now, let's say I have a team of 25 developers, right? We're going to be able to, we're going to be able to triple that. So now we'll have 75 developers. We'll double that, triple that. We have 75 developers that can actually help, you know, build this. And so when I tell people that come to fan base and say, oh, well, fan base doesn't have X, Y, Z, or we want this. I'll, I'll tell you, if you want, if you want dark mode, invest in fan base. If you want carousels, invest in fan base. If you want the same functionality that TikTok has, that all these platforms have, this range will give us the ability to catch those platforms without a doubt. Well, like with the development, I will be able to catch them. But then there's another thing that we want to do is go beyond the innovation that we see that other platforms aren't doing, that they're just not capitalizing on. And so they're missing that mark. Is, is there a point in the development process? Because technology does move so fast. Mm -hmm. As you're developing, you have to be almost precise with what you want to do, because if another platform does it, now it's like you're behind the wheel. Now you're the, the second person that or the third or the fourth. Uh, Fan base, I mean, the, the fourth uh, platform that has something, now it feels like it's old and I have to figure out how to innovate again. Is, right. there, like, is there a frustrating, like how frustrating does that get? That's not really frustrating because honestly, a lot of these platforms, what I've noticed is that they don't innovate. Mm -hmm. The advantage that I think, which is, so, which is so important about what we're building because as a black founded company, that's not black only, which is extremely important that I have to say, because the media will try to say, oh, because it's built by somebody black, it's exclusively for black people. And sometimes we get pigeonholed to that. But what I noticed is that, oh, when I started getting into this space and seeing that my ideas, what we had, and a lot of the things that we filed like seven, eight patents for some of the functionality that we've done. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, it isn't the, these guys are smarter, any smarter than us. They just got the money. But what they do is they put a product out there and say, here, guys, play with it. Make this cool stuff cool. Oh, you want DMs? Oh, they want DMs. Give them that. Oh, okay. They want retweets? Give them that. So it's just money. It's not about innovation. We are the ones that come up. Kids, black culture, we're the ones that come up with all these things that people talk about all the time that get put into social media products. We're the ones that bring those into these spaces, but we don't own them. So that's the reason why I was like, okay. If it's just money, then let's go get the money. And then now we have a, a company that rivals the TikToks and the Instagrams of the world, at least by functionality. Now, execution is one thing, but I, I don't doubt our ability to do that. But at least we've leveled the playing field for people can make a decision. So 17 million, what does that do to the, the landscape of like black startup tech companies? Like, is this something that can be used as a landmark? Is that, how, how will this change the dynamic for black entrepreneurs that are in tech that's trying to raise capital. So from a, from a social media standpoint, it, it'll be pretty impressive because, um, in tech, there are a lot of startups that are founded by black people that often receive funding and they raise lots of money. But two of the most important things that I see are the control of the company and the equity of the company. So I can name, I'm not going to name names, but I can name companies where companies start to raise a hundred million dollars, but 99% of the company is owned by institutional investors and then they force the founder out and great. You get to walk away and say, okay, I made 20, 30 million in tech. I'm a tech founder, but you didn't make a, a dent. My idea with equity crowdfunding and the way that I decided to do fan base is I wanted something that I could be intentional about and build and create generational wealth by allowing people to invest, but also people be able to monetize their content. So from the social media standpoint, this is, we never been here before. And I talk about this, like, I, I was just saying today, if, if, if we don't get this right, 
and by means of fan base, I don't know, we can never have a conversation that we didn't have the opportunity to really take control of an infrastructure and social media and do that because we haven't. I've looked, I've been researching the companies right now in existence. I can only find nine black founded social media apps in existence. And out of all nine, there's only one that is not directly geared towards the black community. And that's fan base. Mm -hmm. I'm building this as if I'm building something for the entire planet as opposed to that. And then on the, on the, you know, the equity crowdfunding side, this is unprecedented because I'm the first black man to raise 10 million in the reg CF space, which is the level where we were at before where I raised the 10 and the 17 is something called a reg A plus round. And so that's a whole different level of investment, a whole different level of compliance and, and, and stuff that we had to do with the SEC. So I'm proud to do that. So all this is, this is unprecedented. It should, it should really shape the mold and really, and really change the way that people think about how they scale and build their companies because I, I see often at times people don't have the, the money to really retain ownership of their company. So I'm trying to retain as much ownership of this. So then down the line, if we do need to raise, let's say three or 400 million, mm -hmm. right? There's an equity to be able to do that, but also give people the opportunity to invest. So this is, this is a, you know, a watershed moment, I say.